I, I know it might be a little too early to discuss can, coaching candidates, but honestly, man, I don't think it's too early right now because, again, Faulkner and Sullivan are not the answers. They're interims. We'll see what they can do, but no matter what they bring to the table, they're not the answers. Hiring within is not the answer. No. The answer is going outside the organization and bringing in someone successful, bringing in someone of, of name, not, not just name value, but someone that has found success elsewhere. And we have a couple names we want to list off right here. First one is obviously going to be Byron Leftwich, yeah, who's, a, who's actually a free agent right now. Yeah, he's still out there, and he's been a name that's been circulating around all the social media about uh, the vacancy offensive coordinator position. Uh, I never shied away from po- possibly bringing in Byron wasn't Leftwich. It, wasn't it earlier this year he reached out to the Steelers? And yes, an yes. Earlier he reached out to the Steelers about you know providing help even as an offensive consultant, you know, whatever, you know, just being a part of the staff and aiding out the offense because the offense is shit. Right. The Steelers apparently did not even reply back. They didn't listen to him. And uh, they they still aren't because they're going to rely on their position coaches underneath. For now, for now. For now. But I I think bringing him in as an assistant or even even just bringing him in now wouldn't, wouldn't be that bad of an idea. It wouldn't. I'm not saying he would be the the answer, but at least he's someone. Uh, he's at least he's someone that has found success elsewhere, and he's not a position coach that we're trying to lean on within the system. Yeah, that would be an that that is the example of bringing in someone as an audition. Yeah, for that role. Yeah, that's bring true. Bring in You're Leftwich, right. let him play the next six games as OC, see what he can bring. That's his audition to get that job, rather than just interviewing him next year. That is what. I call as an audition. Right. Right. Yeah, I get that. You're right. Right, right. But Byron Leftwich is going to be the most popular name, probably. Um, another name out there is going to be Ken Dorsey. He was just fired by the Bills. People say he was a scapegoat for the Bills' mistakes, for the Bills underachieving in their failures. And Josh Allen's turnovers. And Josh Allen's turnovers. Ken Dorsey would easily, 10 times over, more times over, honestly, than that, would be much better than Matt Canada. Yeah. He'd be an, a, a perfect fill in, honestly. I love Ken Dorsey. He found success with the Bills. He knows how to use his targets. So, yeah, I, I would absolutely love to bring in Ken Dorsey. Another one I'll throw out there is Cliff Kingsbury. As OC only, yeah, obviously. He's, yeah, we know how he was as a head coach for the Cardinals. Not a good resume. He's not a head coach whatsoever. But, you know, when you look at the quarterbacks he's worked with at the college level, yeah. Johnny Menzel was a great college player. He just didn't pin out in the, in the NFL. But Pat Mahomes is obviously the most notable one since he was – the head coach at Texas well, Tech when he, Mahomes was the QB well, he was there. obviously with Kyler Murray with his time in Arizona, and yeah. now he is uh, the quarterback coach with USC, who is obviously Caleb Williams he's playing with, or he's he's, he's working with. with. Yeah. So that is a lot of name value when it comes to the quarterback position with Cliff Kingsbury. Maybe that's someone that we entertain and bring in at, for, for an interview, bring him back into the NFL scene. Just throwing his name out there. Yeah, that to get, be get, bad his, at all. get his feet back in the NFL. Him as an OC just... It's not a bad idea. He no. works more as an OC than a head coach. Another name I'll throw out there, and this is a familiar one, Pep Hamilton. Yep. If he sounds familiar, it's because the year we promoted Matt Canada, we interviewed Pep Hamilton for the OC job only because of the minority role. Mm-hmm. So we didn't view him as a serious can. How the fuck do you promote Matt Canada when you interviewed Pep Hamilton? Who the... Do- to this day, I know it was three and a half years ago, but to this day, how the fuck do you fuck that up? Well, the Steelers did. They just brought him in for a minority role uh, interview because it's, that's, it, what, that's it, required. Yeah, that's it. That's all they did, and that's what a lot of teams do normally. But, he but had, they, they missed an opportunity at giving this guy a shot. Seriously, he's 49 years old. I love to bring him in, get him back into the NFL scene. He's worked with a lot of great quarterbacks over his time. So I like to bring him in and... and, and uh, you know the Steelers are gonna have to do their due. They are gonna have to do their minority role uh, uh, interviews again. Yep, they're gonna have to. It's 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 the NFL rule. Even if they want to promote within, which again is not the answer, they're still gonna have to do their minority role uh, minority interviews. So Pep Hamilton should be another one. That's someone they could they should seriously consider. Another one we'll throw out there: Do Staley. Deuce Staley's out Deuce there, yeah. Deuce Staley. Yeah, Deuce Staley. He's the, uh, actually, he's the assistant head coach and the running back or running game coordinator specifically for the Carolina Panthers. He actually held that same role with the Detroit Lions when Dan Campbell was first hired yeah. by Detroit. 
So, and considering, because I mentioned assistant head coach, I don't believe, I don't think the Steelers have filled that position yet since John Mitchell retired this past all season. I'm going to check that. So, um, as of right no, now. No, we do, we do not have an assistant head coach. So, if we're looking at getting somebody to fill in that assistant head coach role, since it's pretty vacant at the moment. Now, they easily could have done this much earlier during the offseason if they got rid of Matt Canada, like they yeah, probably Eric should Bien-Ami. have. Eric and Bien-Ami. Eric Bieniemy that role, considering he was gifted that role in, 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 in Washington for the commanders. But we didn't do that. We just kept Matt Canada. Just to fire him 12 weeks into the season. Yeah, so, but it, it, if there's a guy that we want to give the assistant head coach, because the assistant head coach, I don't think Deuce is going to walk away from that. Because that's a pretty secure role right there right. on the and team. Obviously, he is a former Steeler. So yeah, he was he was the backup running back for Jerome Bettis and Willie Parker. So yeah, but uh, if we were to offer him the assistant head coach role I th- and the OC position, I think that would give him more. I think he'd be more welcoming to that offer, right? Instead of just the OC role, because why would he leave for an offensive coordinator position, but then leave an assistant head coach role? You know and, what I mean? And he worked under Doug Pearson with his time in Philly as an assistant head coach, as the running back coach. So if we were to offer him that assistant head coach role, but give him the offer of the OC position, to which, I mean, many people have argued that he's more than deserving of an offensive coordinator opportunity, Yes, this would be which the time he, which, for it. Which he absolutely is. You know, uh, he like I say, he worked under Doug Pearson, and 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 if 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 they're going to view Eddie Faulkner as a serious guy that they're going to lean on to take over the offense for the rest of the year, and it's probably going to be a name they're going to look at to retain that position if they want to keep the in-house promotions, which I'll keep saying it is not the answer. No, then they should view Deuce Staley as a re- as a reasonable option because of the same position coach, but also assistant head coach. And just, again, he worked under Doug Pearson, who has a good coaching tree. Very good coaching tree. So I think that's a serious name we should look at. There was another name you were telling me about off camera, man. Yeah. He, and I he, really love this he, idea. He's a guy that has caught my eye. His name is Clint Kubiak. If the last name Kubiak rings a bell, Clint Kubiak is the oldest son of former NFL coach Gary Kubiak, former Broncos and Texans head coach. And it's actually kind of crazy because both of them – kind of have a similar like pathway into the NFL. When Gary Kubiak first broke into the NFL as a coach, he was taken under under the wing, under the coaching tree of Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan's father. Right. Legendary coach, great Broncos head coach, won him two Super Bowls. You know, Gary Kubiak was the offensive coordinator, and I think at the same time quarterback coach within the last years of John Elway's career where they won back-to-back Super Bowls with Terrell Davis as the running back. Right. And because of how successful he was with, with however long he was with Denver as the offensive coordinator, that got him a head coaching role with the, the Texans, then later the freaking Broncos again. And we know how he did with Denver as a head coach, won him Super Bowl 50. Right. And Clint, he is actually currently the passing game coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers, which light bulb. Who coaches the San Francisco 49ers? Mike's son, Kyle Shanahan. Similar stories. And it's legitimately a carbon copy story. It's and crazy it's, it's because crazy. The, story, the story's great, but the coaching tree, the coach that he's under is even greater. I mean, that's the son of Mike Shanahan, and this is the son. Clint Kubiak is the son of Gary Kubiak. It's like both the two fathers of these coaches worked together for a long time. Great history. Now the sons are working together. This is a man under Shanahan's coaching tree. And keep in mind, before he even joined Shanahan's coaching tree, he has prior history as an offensive assistant, a passing game coordinator, and, and an offensive coordinator. He was a former offensive coordinator for the Vikings. Yeah, I checked back. That offense was 12th ranked overall on offense. So it's not too bad, you know, top 15. It's kind of something that we're kind of looking for, you know, a a step in the right direction. This is a man that is under Shanahan's coaching tree, and we've all been preaching that we need to get somebody from the Shanahan coaching tree because that that coaching tree is... Is very successful. First of all, last year when we were entertaining Steelers' offensive coordinator options before they unfortunately elected to keep Matt Canada just to fire him 11, 12 weeks into the season, but... We were looking at Thomas Brown, who was the uh, assistant head coach and tight ends coach under Sean McVay. And McVay has a great coaching tree. And, and McVay he, came from the Shanahan tree. Exactly. Both so, Mike and Kyle. So, so, see, see where this is going. And uh, I think Thomas Brown is now the OC for the Panthers, right? Yeah. 
That's the name we were entertaining. We need to go out and get someone under a great coaching tree, a great coaching staff, someone that has succeeded, an offensive coaching staff that has succeeded in the NFL. And you bring up Clint Kubiak. Look at Kyle Shanahan's coaching tree. It might be one of the best in the league. Robert Sala, Mike McDaniel, who's probably the most offensive wizard in the league. Yeah. D'Amico Ryans. Clint Kubiak would be a great option, dude. Yeah. Just based on that reason. And he's 36 years old. He's young. He's a more of a modern offensive mind. And he's just picking the brain. He's soaking up all the information that Kyle Shanahan is feeding all his coaches. From and he appears to be doing very well for Brock Purdy at the same time. You know, you know that's the argument that people continue to make with Kenny Pickett. You know, you give him a, a more competent, younger, fresher offensive coordinator, you know, that, you know, is more modern and up to date with the NFL. You know, you have him work with Kenny Pickett, then maybe Pickett can kind of break out. I'm still kind of, I still kind of have my limitations about that because Kenny's had his moments. He's had his opportunities. Even when Kendall was making up the plays, drawing up the plays, the right. opportunities are there. Just Kenny's missing them completely. So if he's missing it with Canada, then why should I believe he's going to finally hit it with another coordinator? But if the Steelers want to think that way, a guy like Clint, with how young he is, the passing game coordinator that he is for the Niners, and just a solid resume that he has, plus a Kubiak, you know, family heritage, you know, the bloodlines, NFL bloodlines, the NFL bloodlines, you know, love, you know, you know so. they they love that shit. So it's like Clint could be a serious consideration for that OC yeah. position. And I see the chat; they throw a name out there: the Dolphins quarterback coach Daryl Bevel. That's another name too. I mean, look at the development of uh, Tua. I mean. It's very and, and he's under Mike McDaniel's coaching tree. I mean, I know he's he's only been the coach for the Dolphins for two years, but you see the offensive genius Mike McDaniel is. You see the points they're putting up. You see the the explosiveness, the high energy that that offense sprouts out. I, I I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm fucking jealous. So yes, that is an, regardless anyone that is outside the organization that has found success under a good coaching staff is someone the Steelers should consider. They have. An endless amount of options next offseason. They can look, they will do their due diligence. They will look within their organization. They'll look at Faulkner. They'll look at Sullivan. They might even look at our assistant offensive coordinator, right? None of them are the answer. Hiring from within is not the answer. It has failed us time after time, and it's gotten worse year after year after year. Ever since Teddy's left, the offense has only progressed worse. Yeah. Because of our decision to offensive coordinator and our decisions to promote from within house. The defensive coordinator position is even hurting because of the same reason. Mm -hmm. It's got to stop. It has to stop. The in house promotions need to end. You need to go out and grab someone outside your organization under a successful coaching staff, particularly someone offensive minded like a McDaniel or a McVeigh or a Shanahan. That's just the way to go in the NFL nowadays. You have to. You have to. Because when you look at Tomlin's coaching tree, I mean, it's not even growing. No. And he's been here how long? No. That thing hasn't grown. No, that, you... that, that is stuck down in the ground, in the dirt. That's not coming up. No. So it's like you have to go out your way. You have to adapt to the NFL culture nowadays. You got to get somebody from somebody's coaching tree. Right. That's the way to go. So that, if... That's why teams like the Dolphins and the Niners – and, and and the Packers, you know, they found success. Real good success at that. Exactly. So if there's if there's a couple names that we are going to be seriously looking into, like we threw out Leftwich, we threw out Pep Hamilton, we threw out all these other names, right? But if there's some serious guys we are looking at, and shout out to the chat for this name, I wasn't even looking at him. Daryl Bevel for sure, Clint Kubiak, or Deuce Staley. Those are my three top options, at least as of now. I haven't looked any deeper yet, but as of now, those are my three top options next year. They're going to have to do some minority uh, uh, interviews because that's the NFL rule now. So definitely can make them serious considerations. But don't, no don't just do it for the sake of, hey, I did this. I followed the rule. No, they are serious considerations, serious candidates. They're just out there waiting for the opportunity. They have an endless... Dude, the line is piling up right now. They have an endless amount of names for next offseason. It fucking excites me. Yeah. It's up to the Steelers whether they want to let any of them in. Are they just going to close up shop be like, Nah, it's closed. It's closed. You know, we're, we're going to stick with the guys we got now. No. That can't be the way we go. It failed you. No, you got to open up the doors. You got to open up the club. You got to let these guys in. You got to let these guys in, man. Let them have some fun. Let them party it up. 
Let them use these weapons. Let let them let them come in and bring their input, their knowledge, their knowledge, their offensive minds, their scheme. Because the scheme we have is freaking old as shit. Let them it's run. Stale. Let them run free, dude. Seriously. Let them be what they need to be. Because this this position, this this the coordinator position that has opened up. This could be a big opportunity for anybody to really make their mark in the league, make their mark in the NFL. Yes. That way they get a big opportunity two, three years down the road. Right. This is what coaches work their way for. It's what Tomlin did. Dude, look, That's what Tomlin did as a DC for the Vikings. And then he fucking made his made his mark in the interview with Dan Rooney, and now he's been the head coach however right. long. Many coaches crave for this opportunity. Dude. You can't just gift it to the people that are in house. You can't be doing that. That doesn't work no. anymore. It's more of a it's like a, hey, thanks for your service, but uh you know, like no, we're not doing that. We're not being buddies. We're not being team friendly. No, we're going out and doing the proper business decisions. Today the Steelers did that properly by firing Matt Canada. Took them three and a half years, but they finally did it. Better late than never. Better late than never. You're absolutely right. I'd much rather them fire him now than keep him the rest of the season and just let his contract run out. Fuck him. He sucks. Fuck him, dude. Seriously. Nothing personal, but it's business. It's as simple as this. If you're not qualified for the job, you got to get out. You're done. You suck. You fucking suck. I am sick and tired. I got so sick and tired of watching him for three and a half years. It's about time. And I want to give a shout out to the chat for bringing out another name. Shout out to the chat, man. They're bringing up some extra ideas. Ben Johnson. Yep, Ben Johnson. The Lions OC. The only, the only problem is, will he allow from OC to OC? They do that. They can do that. We're going to need permission from the Lions to do so, but would he lateral from the Lions to the Steelers? Would he want to leave Dan Campbell for Mike Tomlin? I mean, based off the resume, I mean, I think just about any other coach would want to come coach for Mike Tomlin based right. off the type of person and leader that he is. But I, I don't know. The Lions are, are on a hot streak, and Dan yeah. Campbell, he's building something. I mean, I don't know if Ben Johnson would want to leave that. No. One, thi- one thing I would definitely not do is uh, look at any – uh, coaching, uh, college coaches. No, no, I would not. No, I would no, not. No, because I was Canada. That didn't work. Let, let them come. Let them come in as position coaches and build themselves up. That's how all these other guys are where they're at now. Yeah, you can't just bring in an offense or a college coach and make them the OC with a young offense that really needs to start striking within a couple years. Next year, next year, seriously, next year's make or break for everyone on the offense, especially Kenny Pickett. We'll get into that later, but. No one from no one from college. Bring in someone that has built their way up throughout the league, and someone with a successful and a a, a very modern coaching staff. That's what they need to do. The line is long, but you better start interviewing every single last one of them. I want to hear interview after interview after interview after interview. If we get any in-house promotion, if Rob is right on his prediction in a year from a year and a half ago where he said Mike Sullivan's going to be promoted, that's, that's not the answer, and nor is it going to go over well. If, if he is promoted, if he's gifted the job like Matt Candle was, nothing will change. No. Nothing will change. You will see nothing but the same old shit, the same old type of plays, play calling, all that bullshit that we have been enduring for since Fickner. Yeah. 